Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Smartphone Telecommunications Holdings Limited annual results announcement and management presentation for the financial year 2023 and 24. First, may I introduce you to the executives here with us today. Ms. Fiona Lau, Executive Director and Chief Executive Officer. Mr. Stephen Chow, Executive Director and Chief Technology Officer. And we have Mr. Vincent Dong, General Manager of Finance with us today. The briefing will begin with a slide presentation by Ms. Fiona Lau and Mr. Stephen Chow, followed by a Q&A section. If you would like to ask a question during the Q&A section, please submit your question through the messaging tab on the webcast page. Now, may I invite Ms. Lau and Mr. Chow to begin the presentation, please. Good afternoon, and welcome to Smart Home FY24 Annual Results Presentation. For today's presentation, Stephen and I will first take you through the business review. After that, I will take you through the financial review and outlook section before opening the floor for questions. As you can see on this slide, overall, Smart Turn delivered a set of results that demonstrated the resilience of our business and profit amidst a challenging operating environment. For the year reported, service revenue, excluding MVNO, SMS and prepaid was up 2% year over year. Roaming revenue grew substantially, increasing 44% year over year. 5G penetration continued to increase steadily and reached nearly 40% as of June 2024. Our mobile postpay ARPU was stable at $224. It is worth noting that our 5G ARPU is two times our 4G ARPU. With regards to our two growth drivers, first, 5G home broadband. It has continued to grow strongly, with revenue increasing 33% year over year and EBITDA rising 70%. For the other growth driver, our enterprise solutions revenue registered a 17% year over year growth and the business continued to deliver material contribution to profitability. Our full year dividend, therefore, per share, remained the same as last year at 32 cents, representing a 75% payout ratio and an attractive yield of 8.4%, based on today's closing price. These are the financial highlights for the last year. Now, that said, we do have experienced substantial headwinds in the last year. SMS revenue has come down substantially there is no longer a need to deliver COVID-related SMS in the last year, unlike during COVID times. MVNO, it is a highly price-sensitive segment. A few years ago, we have decided not to use our 5G for MVNO. There has been a gradual decline in revenue in our MVNO segment. And in the local mobile market, pricing has continued to be highly competitive. And while our premium customer base has been quite stable, the lower segment does face quite a lot of pressure. I'll take you through the numbers one by one. Throughout the year, Smartphone's business maintained a strong performance and our core 5G post-pay customer base continued to grow, with our customer base reaching 2.7 million in June 2024, up 1% year over year. Despite intense competitive pressure, our ARPU has maintained a premium remained remarkably stable despite intense competition. With 5G ARPU double that of 4G, it is a testament of the differentiation between 4G and 5G surfaces. And the benefits are clear, especially when you use it for video streaming, gaming, as well as AI or VI applications. We see that there is clear difference in propositions between 4G and 5G, and the pricing should reflect that accordingly. We believe the resilience of our customer base and the premium level of our pool underscores the high quality of our customers whom we serve with superior service and network performance. On roaming, at Smartphone, we believe in the total ownership of our customers' experience, including when customers are overseas using our partners' network. We understand that when customers travel, the reliability when using applications such as Google Map 
WhatsApp calls, Uber is extremely important. We want customers to know that we take care of the roaming experience the same way as we take care of how they use it at home. There are a number of things that we have done. We offer free dedicated hotline for customers. We monitor real time our roaming partners' network performance so that we are promptly aware of any issues affecting our customers' roaming. And then for every single customer who returned to Hong Kong after their travel, we get immediate feedback from them. We use a five-star survey the moment they return to Hong Kong. In our care app, customers can actually pin down the locations easily when they feel that issues with their reception. And in addition to all the above, collecting all the feedback from the customers, we have launched our Smart Tones Roaming Academy. We provide tips for our customers before they travel. These tips include minimizing data usage, for example, by switching off iPhone synchronization, how to switch on in-flight roaming, switch it off if you don't need it, how to check details of your roaming plans in our care app, and how to make roaming calls. We hope these tips will educate our customers on how to enjoy a smooth roaming experience. With that, uh, by delivering better service and launching more customer-oriented offerings, we were able to achieve strong growth in revenue. And during the year, our roaming revenue increased 44% year over year. Our outbound roaming revenue especially has recovered to 102% pre-COVID level. In fact, while voice roaming has declined, as many customers now switch to use WhatsApp calls, Outbound roaming revenue among consumers have recovered to 141% of pre-COVID level as of June 2024. Furthermore, the percentage of our post-pay customers using our own roaming service has doubled that of the pre-pandemic times. And this is done by us offering a value-for-money multi-day pack, which has proved to be very, very popular uh, among our consumers. We are encouraged by these developments and we believe that the momentum and the opportunity to further grow the roaming business is very strong. On 5G home broadband, which is the other growth driver, we are very excited to report the continuous and strong growth of our 5G home broadband business. With dedicated effort to grow the product, we now have the largest market share and we are recognized as the number one best preferred 5G home broadband provider. The popularity of our product stems from the fact that it is easy to install, cost-effective, and provide reception in all buildings and remote areas where this becomes the only way to get good Wi-Fi. Outside of home, there are more and more use cases that customers have used this product for. For instance, working in a coffee shop or using it for pop-up stores for SMEs, etc., etc. 65% of new orders last year come from cost selling into our existing customer base. We have remaining one-third from household fixed fiber consumer base previously untapped by Smart Home. This opens up new touch points and new areas of growth, and potentially where we can see more synergies with our group company, Sun Hong Kai Properties. What we've also observed is that the attrition rate uh, for this product is extremely low. It's so much lower than our mobile business. We believe that you know, this is a strong proposition and that our, our customers are very sticky in using our product. As you can see, over the years, the business has delivered a strong and consistent performance. 5G home broadband has now become a core business pillar. During the year, revenue increased 33% year over year, while EBITDA rose 70% year over year demonstrating strong growth potential alongside emerging economies of scale. In summary, the 5G home broadband has now transformed into a core business delivering a significant contribution to the company's profitability, and we will continue to invest more resources to grow this product and to expand into the smart home segment. I will now pass on to Stephen to talk about enterprise solutions and our network and AI initiatives. Thank you, Fiona. I would like to, like to start the enterprise solution business first. We are very pleased to see there's an increasing interest from our enterprise customers looking for solutions to enhance their productivity and also to digitalize their operation process. Over the years, 
we've expanded our portfolio to cater for different industry needs. Our solution now include smart home, smart mall, smart hotel, just to name a few. Our enterprise solution business has delivered consistent double-digit growth over the years. During the year under review, revenue increased 17% year on year, and the business is delivering material contribution to our business. The growth momentum is continuing, and enterprise solution is becoming one of the key business drivers. Now, I would like to share with you two very successful examples. We are very happy to share that our AI-enabled smart transport solution, which was co-designed and adopted by KMB, was awarded the top five best mobile innovation for digital life by the Global Mobile Awards at the Mobile World Congress earlier this year in Barcelona. For those of you who may not know well about this award, you can say this is actually the equivalent of Oscar in the mobile world with hundreds of operators globally participating in this competition, including, for example, China Mobile, China Unicom, Deutsche Telekom. Smartphone is the first ever operator in Hong Kong to win this prestige mobile award. By utilizing 5G and AI technologies, the tra smart transport provides 5G Wi-Fi on the bus and real-time information on the occupancy as well as the queuing information on those major bus exchange, which is used by passengers to plan their journeys and also the bus operator to improve the operation efficiency and the fish management. The smart transport solution is a great example which illustrates our ability to develop innovative solutions for the corporate sector. And I feel very honored that we get this award, which is well recognized our significant contribution to the smart city development in Hong Kong. In addition to the smart transport, another great example, smart hotel, is a groundbreaking solution we launched in conjunction with our parent group to cater for the needs of the hotel sector. What is remarkable here is that it's a fully functional mobile-enabled smart hotel solution, the first of kind in Hong Kong. To give you a better idea, Customers can simply use their mobile phone to remote check-in and check-out, use it as a mobile room keys, control in room smart living options, and book a range of hotel facilities. You don't need to have the hustle to queue up at the help desk. The solution can be customized to integrate with the legacy hotel management system and automate a range of functions to enhance operational efficiency. In summary, we believe smart hotel has a lot of growth potential and a high degree of adaptability to deploy across the hotel industry, Hong Kong, and even outside Hong Kong. Now, I would like to share with you all what we are doing on the network. Here at Smart Home, we are continuously investing to make Hong Kong proud. First of all, the Smart Home network is now 5G advanced ready and it supports intelligent dynamic network slicing for different applications and use cases. It also supports AI-enabled resources management to provide service assurance in mission-critical applications. It will be very useful for the development of the innovative application to meet different enterprise needs. Furthermore, we are continuing expanding our coverage and capacity to deliver the best customer experience anytime, anywhere. In anticipating of the population movement, we have proactively extended our coverage to all the mega infrastructure, venue like Go Park, a massive entertainment spot and retail venue, the airport and the Kaita Sport Park. This year, we have added more than 100 base stations throughout Hong Kong to enhance our coverage as well as the capacity and improve further the user experience. We have deployed the 700 megahertz spectrum across Hong Kong to further extend our deep indoor coverage everywhere. Also, with the highest spectrum per, use, per user, we can provide better speed performance even in congested area. For instance, we can provide exceptional network performance 
for our customers commuting in MTL even during peak hours. As a leading operator in Hong Kong, Smartphone is committed to transform Hong Kong into an innovation and technology hub. In addition to deploying AI for our enterprise customers, at Smartphone, we are also passionate about using AI to improve our customer experience and drive efficiency in our business and network. Just give you a few examples on what we are doing. We are using AI to score every single customer individual and look for area of improvement so as to prioritize our network resources and improvement in the user experience. We're also using AI to interpret customer attitude and the sentiment and using the result to proactively enhance our products and services to improve customer satisfaction. Leveraging data analytics to deliver highly personalized and timely offers, which will greatly enhance our customer loyalty and generate great customer engagement with us. Using AI also to assess and predict network traffic in real time, so as to able to make the energy efficiency further enhanced without compromising network performance. Now, I will end my part of the presentation and hand back to Fiona. I'd like to talk a little bit about our cybersecurity risks. As a trustworthy and reliable network service provider, Smartphone is dedicated to protecting its customers from the growing threat of cybersecurity risks, including identity thefts, data privacy leaks, and scam calls. And now take the opportunity to discuss some of the initiatives from us. You may have read in the news that many Hong Kong citizens fell into money traps when they received calls from customer service, claiming that they need information of the accounts. Back in March this year, we are the first in Hong Kong to launch an innovative free service that allows our customers to verify the identity of our staff. Typically, such verification is done towards the customers to verify your identity before providing service to you. Now for Smartphone, for any calls you receive, claiming to be a Smartphone representative, you may first ask to verify our staff's identity. The way it works is that the staff will read to you a four-digit verification code, which you can check in our Smart Home Care app. The same app that at the application that you, you check your bill or buy roaming data packs. Now, if the verification code matches, you can feel assured that the call is legitimate. We have paid special attention to not just do it via WhatsApp or SMS, as we feel that the most reliable source of information should be our care app that our customers use every day. To further protect the communication channels with our customers, Smartphone's SMS, social media, and WhatsApp accounts, and the links that we use are all officially verified to give our customers the confidence that they're dealing with Smartphone. Moreover, we have a number of services to safeguard customers against cybersecurity threats. DataGuard. Think of it like an antivirus software, but tailored for mobile phones. Many of us have installed antivirus software on our laptops, but not many have done so for our phones. Yet, if you think about it, the phone might have even more of your personal data. Having a software that can detect unusual data transfer patterns and promptly alert you to take actions will give customers extra peace of mind. CallGuard. It minimizes junk calls, which are increasingly annoying, as well as filtering out the identifiable potential scam numbers, reducing the potential of cybersecurity threats. We've also launched this add-on number on the same phone on-demand service. Many times we are asked to provide numbers for online shopping, different promotions and logistic services that we use. We may not feel comfortable giving them our personal numbers. Now, this add-on number feature will let you generate a new number on demand and you don't need to change any SIM or phone to get the calls or messages. We believe this gives uh, customers both convenience and an extra safety net in dealing with uncert uncertain circumstances. Moving forward, Smartphone will continue to innovate its services to address these concerns, as well as to educate and support customers to navigate these widespread threats.
Uh, finally, on this section uh, regarding environmental sustainability, Smartong recently introduced a new carbon film coating technology for the HVAC condensers of our chiller units. The application of the innovative coating has delivered measurable environmental benefits, including a 6% reduction in power consumption, as well as enhancing the efficiency and longevity of the HVAC systems. This upgrade demonstrates Smart Tone's commitment to implementing sustainable technologies and to reduce uh, our env environmental footprint. As a trusted partner, Smart Tone launched the Smart Parent Academy, to empower parents to confidently guide the children through the online world. As for community and well-being, we supported the uh, charity marathon uh, back in uh, 2024 through the provision of our 5G Wi-Fi service in the venue. In September last year, Smart Tone provided free 5G home broadband routers and services to support residents impacted by sudden internet outage. In the last few months, the biggest news in town was Olympics. To support the cause, Smart Tone connected the community by providing free local data to customers so that they can watch the Olympics anytime, anywhere. To express gratitude to our 35 athletes who brought so much pride to Hong Kong, we are providing them with free lifetime local data for their hard work and dedication. In addition, Smart Tone is the official sponsor for the Hong Kong Paralympic team. Finally, um, on the awards, um, with a relentless pursuit of customer satisfaction, Smart Tone has been recognized and awarded for its exceptional service in the telecommunication industry. During the year, we have received a number of awards for our sales, our network, our care app, and online store from credible and reputable organizations. We are particularly proud of the fact that five of our sales staff who won the Distinguished Sales Award um, organized by the HKMA. Smartphone is the only communications provider to be named to top five of the award, and this also demonstrates our commitment to developing our employees. In summary, these prestigious awards demonstrate our commitment to providing excellent customer experiences and network performance. This concludes our business review section. I'll now move on to financial review. As mentioned, Smartphone delivered a set of results that demonstrated the resilience of our business and profit amidst a challenging operating environment. Service revenue excluding handset sale was down 1% year over year. Service revenue excluding MVNO, SMS and prepaid, which refers to the core business we have, was up 2% year over year. Operating expenses decreased by 2%. Profit, compared to prior year's report to profit, has increased 75%. Profit was in line with prior year's profit, excluding the provision made for the potential financial investment loss in FY23. Net cash increased 39% to $1.5 billion. The board has proposed a final dividend of $0.17.5 cents per share, making full-year dividend $0.32 cents per share, same as last year. As you can see on this slide, despite the intense price competition and the challenging macro economy, our core service revenue still increased 2% year over year, demonstrating the resilience of our business. Despite high inflation environment, we are pleased to say that through vigilant cost control and implementation of a number of efficiency initiatives, we have been able to achieve a 2% year-over-year reduction in OPEX. This has allowed us to reprioritize resources to key growth areas such as 5G home broadband and enterprise solutions. We have also achieved a slight decrease in depreciation and amortization through cautious control over CapEx in recent years. Notwithstanding intense competition, our EBITDA margin has remained stable which reflects the resilience of our core business and premium customer base. Going forward, we will continue to maintain stable OPEX through efficiency and productivity enhancement without compromising quality and continuous investment into our network. In terms of CapEx, core CapEx has been relatively stable, down 1% year over year compared to last year, reflecting stabilization of capital expenditure following the 5G rollout 
and a disciplined approach towards network investment. Even including the addition of 100 cell sites last year, which Stephen mentioned, uh, we're still able to maintain a slight decrease in our core capex. Spectrum costs has peaked in FY23 and has also decreased 1% year over year. We expect it to gradually decline in the future. Our healthy operating cash generation has resulted in an increase in net cash, which is up 39% year over year. In sum, our business and profit have remained resilient despite intense competition and a challenging environment, and notwithstanding the various headwinds that I talked about um, in the beginning of the presentation. We have expanded our premium customer base and increased our 5G penetration. We have built two growth engines with emerging scale, our 5G home broadband and the enterprise solutions. They have become the core business with high growth potential. We have exercised vigilant cost control over CapEx and OPEX without sacrificing quality. And again, our full year dividend per share remained the same as last year at 32 cents, representing 75% payout ratio and an attractive yield of 8.4% according to today's closing share price. In terms of the outlook, I'd like to um, say that we expect the challenging operating environment will continue, intense competition will persist. Nonetheless, we believe that with our outstanding customer service, exceptional network performance, which we provide to our premium customer base, Smart Tone will remain resilient against such pressure. Growth momentum on roaming remains very strong. Our 5G home broadband and enterprise solutions are also growing well, especially 5G home broadband, which is maturing to be a very sustainable growth pillar. As elevated cybersecurity risks persist, we will offer more products, support, and education to enable our customers to face up to such challenges. We believe that it is times like this that our trust-based relationships with our customers will pay off. Finally, as always, we are committed to invest efficiently and building the best network for Hong Kong in the long term. Thank you, Ms. Lau and Mr. Chow. Now we will have the Q&A section. Please raise your question through the messaging tab on the webcast page. Our management will answer your questions. We will read out the questions and to make the best use of time, similar or repetitive questions will be grouped together for management to answer. The first question is, do you foresee further growth in roaming given roaming revenue has already staged a larger recovery? Right, so we have quite a strong year last year uh, in terms of our roaming revenue. Um, our, if you look at the consumer uh, segment, our recovery has, uh, is higher than the actual traffic that we're seeing from our, our, our consumers. And we are benefiting uh, from uh, offering more value for money, uh, uh, multi-day packs, uh, which we haven't really pushed in the, in the past, but you know, we are promoting quite a lot uh, this year. And as a result of that, uh, our penetration of our, consume, uh, our customers using our roaming products have doubled. Uh, we still see a lot of room to grow. Uh, we believe that uh, offering um, value for money products is a, is a good strategy and we'll continue to pursue that. And we feel that um, in, in, a, in a market that a lot of um, cheaper uh, prepaid products or you know, obs somewhat obsolete uh, Wi-Fi X, we believe that we can actually capture a lot of those uh, uh, roaming uh, usage uh, within our customer, customer base. The next question is, do you think Abu will be under pressure? Okay, uh, Abu has always been under pressure uh, given the fact that um, the market competition is very intense. I think uh, it has been quite a trend, uh, consistent trend in the last years. Um, what we have seen, uh, however, is that uh, within our, our premium customer base, we are able to sustain quite a steady uh, ARPU. And I think they, uh, our, our premium customers really like us for the superior service and network quality that we're providing. Where we see more pressure is among the uh, lower tier segment. Uh, as you can see, as I, as, as I said, in the, in the MVNO segment, we, we do see quite a lot of pressure. And 
these are uh, customers who are quite uh, price sensitive. Uh, so we'll continue to navigate. I think uh, uh, you know, we, we cannot change what we cannot change, but I think what we'll do is to continue to invest in our service and our network, and we believe that um, with the uh, more of the 5G applications coming on, um, the, the 5G proposition uh, will be stronger, and we, we are uh, expecting a, a growing 5G penetration uh, over time. Uh, you'll see that the um, our 5G ARPU is double that of the 4G ARPU. So I think with the a applications coming, with our strong proposition and our network, um, um, we'll, we'll navigate the uh, challenging ARPU uh, competitive environment. The next question is, what is the outlook for CapEx? Um, in terms of the uh, CapEx, as, you, as I um, showed you before, I think the, the CapEx has peaked. Um, we have um, fully rolled out our 5G uh, network uh, and the equipment. Um, we do not foresee that there will be a big jump of CapEx. In fact, uh, I think uh, in, the, in the coming years, it will come down. Um, I think that said, uh, we'll still continue to look for uh, improvement areas in terms of our network, but we will invest efficiently. Um, I think that that's the uh, philosophy that will hold. 下一条问题系：现时每间电信商都有提供五 G 家居宽频，市场是否已经饱和？啊，系诶，好多电信商都有诶、啊、提供呢个五 G 家居宽频啦。咁我谂我哋诶、啊，我哋 proud to say that 我哋系诶，我哋有个而家暂时嚟讲，我哋个市场占有率系最高啦。咁我谂我哋系诶一间诶。啊 mobile 為本嘅一個一個電信商啦，咁所以對於我哋嚟講，誒五 G 家居寬頻係係係我哋嚟講係一個 totally additive， 即係話係誒誒我哋如果我哋能夠 cross sell into 我哋嘅而家嘅客群，其實就誒嗰、呃那個係一個一個對我哋嚟講係一個 incremental 嘅生意啦。咁誒，我我哋唔覺得飽和嘅，因為誒 ，in fact 係仲有好多 growth opportunity。以前就冇呢個 product 啦，咁我諗大家就即係喺屋企就用誒寬頻啦。咁但係其實好多地方咧，啲寬頻咧其實未必係收得咁好啦。誒或者其實冇 fiber 寬頻啦，寬頻啦，或者佢哋喺嗰個佢哋嗰個誒住宅嗰棟樓嗰度咧，可能唔係咁多選擇啦。咁所以其實呢啲都係我哋見到誒。喺五 G 家居寬頻呢個市場嚟講咧，係非常之有增長嘅潛力啦。咁我哋都推出咗其實兩三年啦。咁我哋都見到咧，其實越嚟越多唔同嘅 use case 係放五 G 家居寬頻嘅。其實唔係淨係，雖然我哋叫名叫家居寬頻啦，其實唔係淨係屋企先用到。我哋見到其實有時，譬如一啲 SME 可能佢哋開一啲 pop up 嘅嘅店，咁其實佢都可以攞住我個五五 G 呢個寬頻咧去出去誒、呃、做生意。誒、uh, ，我哋見到譬如有啲誒、uh, 人中意 work from home， 或者係誒、uh, work out of 一個 coffee shop， 咁其實佢哋都可以攞住個五呢、這個咁樣嘅誒五 G 家居寬頻咧，係攞出去誒、uh, 用嘅。因為我諗呢樣嘢係個個個主要分別就係佢好容易用，佢係一插入去就用得，亦都可以 multi device 等於一個 WiFi。咁呢一個咁誒咁咁咁方便嘅一個咁嘅 proposition 咧，其實我哋見到係。誒、呃、好多好多呢、这個誒呢、呃这個呢、这個 consumers 都都諗緊一啲新嘅新嘅 use case 啦，咁所以誒、呃、我哋絕對覺得係好大潛力。我哋而家嘅誒嘅 market share among 成個誒成、呃、個誒 fix fiber 其實係一個 low single digit， 咁所以對我哋嚟講，我哋覺得誒仲、呃、有好大嘅誒、呃、增長嘅潛力。下一條問題係為什麼選擇退出澳門市場？如何處理現時嘅澳門客户？好，誒誒，較早前啦，我哋誒、呃、兩個禮拜前咧，都都即係公布咗話，我哋會誒、呃、歸還翻我哋喺澳門嗰個 mobile 嘅牌照俾澳門政府啦。咁誒嗰個主要嘅原因咧，就係、是、其實我哋見到澳門個市場，我哋去誒、呃、提供個澳門市場第一嗰個 size 有限啦。咁我哋去提供誒呢、呃这個，我哋好希望可以提供個好好嘅 network。俾我哋誒、呃、澳門嘅客啦 ，smart 通嘅客啦，但係即係奈何誒、呃，我哋好多 constraint 其實係唔容許我哋去誒、呃、做到呢樣嘢。咁我哋對我哋嗰個 network 嗰、那個啊嗰、呃那個嗰、那個 expectation 個 performance 其實係非常之高。即係當我哋覺得我哋係誒 just 我哋做唔到一個我哋覺得滿意嘅嘅 network performance， 其實我哋就寧願選擇去退出。咁誒。呃
我哋而家嘅澳門客啦，就唔單止我哋客，其實我哋啲誒員工啦，其實都會去過渡到去、呃、一間澳門現時現有嘅一個主要嘅營運商啦。咁我哋都係 expect 一個好、呃、smooth 嘅一個 transition 嘅安排。下一條問題係預計 iPhone 十六的銷情如何？啊、uh, ，好 ，iPhone 十六啦，咁啊嚟緊個兩個禮拜就會誒、uh, 就會 announce 啦。咁我諗今年 iPhone 誒、uh, 大家都可能留意到誒、uh, 都係 sell AI 啦，即係我諗 AI as a use case 呢個其實喺個 iPhone 嗰度嗰個嗰、那個 potential 非常非常之高啦。咁我哋亦都見到誒呢、uh, 這個 AI 嘅 application 其實喺十四或者之前嗰啲 iPhone 其實都誒、uh, 用唔到嘅。咁所以我哋其實 expect 都會唔少客會換機嘅。咁我哋而家 so far 我哋都有啲 pre sale 進行緊啦。咁我哋都見到個 momentum 都唔錯嘅。The next question is how much will Smartphone invest in the next few years to further enhance its network performance? Thank you.、Uh, I think I, I can't give you a, a numbers. For example, in the, how how much we're going to invest in the next few years. But definitely, we will continue to invest to make sure we are maintaining our leadership in the market and offering the best experience to our customers.、Uh, overall, we expect the, as Fiona、uh, just said, the capex level will not. We already reached the peak, so we expect will come down over the next few years as well. The next question is: Will you start 5G A commercial service in this financial year? Okay.、Um, I think we we already get our network ready for 5G A.、Uh, in fact, we are running some pilot,、uh, including different application utilizing network slicing here and there.、Uh, regarding a full commercial service, we expect it will, it will take a little bit more time. Probably we、we'll、want some some、uh, friendly user trial this year, followed by a a, a, a more widespread、uh, you know launch in the in the in the next year、uh, in in one or two years time. We will now take the last question before concluding the briefing today. 最后一条问题系，随住越来越多嘅骗案，电信商如何保障客户？系我哋都留意到啦，咁近年都系好多骗案啦，即系骗徒亦都层出不穷。咁我哋诶，即系保障我哋嘅客户系我哋最紧张、最紧张嘅一样嘢啦。咁我头先都用咗唔少篇幅去讲，我哋其实诶有唔同嘅 product 诶系去诶帮啲客去 filter out 诶呢一啲。誒誒呢啲 scam calls 啦，咁誒與此同時，其實我哋都會做好多誒、uh, education， 我哋會開好多 seminar 咧，去教我哋啲客咧，其實佢哋點樣去防範呢啲嘢，或者我哋見到誒、uh, 有啲乜嘢嘅誒誒手法，咁我哋其實都好好誒好想去多啲提提醒我哋啲客誒點、uh, 樣去誒、uh, 保障誒佢哋誒自己嘅私隱或者佢哋嘅財產。This will conclude today's briefing. Thank you very much for joining us today. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.